G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for uh, yet another West Coast Eagles video. I'm sure you guys are probably sick of me talking about the Eagles quite so much, but believe me, I wish I was. Uh, I wish I had positive reasons to make videos about the West Coast Eagles. It doesn't really give me a whole lot of joy sitting here in front of you talking about uh, everything that's going wrong with my football club at the moment, but I'm kind of also making it because I think it's a, an interesting, broader issue that I'm interested to get people's thoughts on as well. It's certainly a story that's doing the rounds well and truly in the West Australian media right now. I'm not too sure how much has been talking about over East. So it kind of over here gives us the impression that uh, that the whole AFL world is sort of reacting to this story about players going out uh, and getting COVID from a nightclub. But at the very least, you know, we've got Caroline Wilson talking about us, uh, you know, footy classifier talking about how things are just wretched at the West Coast Eagles at the moment. So I thought I'd give you a video uh, on my take of the situation because it's not something I've spoken publicly about. But also I feel that perhaps my thoughts on this issue might actually be in the minority uh, of all the opinions that I've seen so much of over the last week or so. So keen to have your thoughts on the issue as well, but I'll give you mine first. So if you somehow missed it, the story is that uh, seven West Coast Eagles have gone out to a nightclub on the Friday night, straight after the game against Richmond at off the stadium where the Eagles lost by 109 points, probably top three uh, worst performances or worst losses at least uh, that I can remember at watching this football club. So the context of that is it was a really, really bad loss and seven players went out and partied with uh, with Richmond players. Originally, it was reported that two players went out. Uh, then that grew to five players. And now I think we've all agreed that it was seven players that actually went out on this night out, including Jackson Nelson, Rotham, Waterman, Chesser, Bazo, Nash, and Hugh Dixon. And following that, Jackson Nelson has contracted COVID-19 uh, and it's probably, we don't know for sure, but it's probably somewhat safe to assume that he's got it from this night out. For a little bit of context, I think at least a couple of those players have had COVID before, including Hugh Dixon and Josh Rotham, if I'm not mistaken. Not too sure about Waterman. Uh, Chess is out of action anyway, and Bazo, again, not too sure, but uh, another player who's been injured this whole time. So from what I can gather, this all came to light after the Eagles made a media statement, I think during the middle of last week, where Simpson had publicly said that he was furious with the actions of these West Coast Eagles players, who showed an error in judgment of going out and partying during these peak pandemic conditions. Nisbet then made a statement and said that the players involved would be punished for breaking club and player guidelines uh, for attending a nightclub. Over the course of the week, the Eagles then named and shamed the players. They found them each $5,000 uh, with half of that amount suspended, which it has to be said, $5,000 to these particular players is a fair amount of money. We're not talking about the stars of the list by any means. Chesser and Bazo would be, I'd imagine, still on their initial rookie contracts. Dixon and Nash would be, again, you know, getting probably baseline AFL money. Not too sure about Nelson and Rotham, but both of these players are kind of fringe players as well. So I'm not too sure on the specific numbers here. They could have changed... Uh, you know, since I last heard it, but I think that the baseline sort of AFL contract is around about the $80,000 mark, which for perspective is actually below the average Australian um, salary, if I'm not mistaken. I think the average Australian makes $90,000 a year. So for the majority of these players, they actually make less than average. Uh, and so a $5,000 whack is actually fairly significant. It's a little bit different if we're talking about a player who's on a million dollars a year, $5,000 whack is, uh, is fairly insignificant by comparison. The Eagles choice of punishment for this situation was uh, not to suspend the players. And the reason for that, in my opinion, is fairly obvious. We can barely field a team as it is. So taking the decision to uh, you know, suspend seven players from playing football is realistically not an option. And Adam Simpson actually came out and he says he understands it that the Eagles couldn't call on top-up players if they had club imposed suspensions on players that were available. So if the Eagles had chosen to suspend those players, we would presumably have had to forfeit our game against Brisbane. So those are the facts. That's basically what happened. And uh, maybe I can give you my thoughts on, you know, what do I actually think of these players and their actions? And, and my opinion personally is that there was no doubt on error of judgment on their part. But I don't know if it's a severe violation. We're talking about an eight-day break here. From my understanding, football players can go out and have a night out either the night of the game or in the case of an eight-day break, maybe, you know, the Saturday night. But from my understanding, the expectation is, and I think this actually flows on to, um, you know, state-level football as well, that you shouldn't be drinking during the week because, you know, obviously you've got training uh, and obviously recover to consider as well. So AFL players are allowed to go out and enjoy themselves, although not at the expense of their own recovery. 
So under normal circumstances, the act of actually going out after a game, even a, even a loss, is it's not uncommon. It's fairly common practice and not unacceptable under normal circumstances. But obviously, we're talking about a peak pandemic sort of situation. Having said that, though, none of these boys are actually breaking you know community guidelines or restrictions on going out and having a beer. Nightclubs are all open. There's no real restrictions as far as I'm aware still. In Western Australia at the moment, you can go out even if you're considered a close household contact. You just have to wear a mask. As far as I'm aware, that doesn't apply to any of these players. Further to that, going out and partying with opposition players after a game is not uncommon. It does probably sit a little bit uneasily with fans of sport because we, we don't always think of these players as human. But from the picture that I could tell, you know, the Eagles boys, they seem to be pictured with West Australian Richmond players who may have been their friends to begin with. And then, of course, you consider Pat Nash was a Richmond player last year as well. It's not unreasonable to expect these guys will be friends, nor is it against any sort of rule or expectation that you can't go out and have a beer with opposition players. So we've established that the Eagles players didn't break any sort of community restrictions or guidelines uh, under the government rules. However, the media response has been as though they have. And personally, I don't know how I really feel about clubs having the power to impose don't go out clubbing rules on players the night after a game and then sanctioning them for then going out. So there's two possible scenarios and we don't have clarity on uh, which of these is more true, but there was either clear specific team rules about going out and partying and that you couldn't do it, or there were no rules in place. For me personally, I think clubs would be slightly overstepping if they're placing a blanket ban on going out and having a good time after the game. Does that sort of also allude to the fact that maybe we've placed restrictions on going out to other high density areas during peak pandemic conditions? Don't get me wrong, I think it's okay to have the conversation and say, boys, be smart, be sensible, use common sense, and don't put yourself at risk. But do they have the jurisdiction to actually make a rule and then fine you because of it? That part, I'm not too sure about. And then there's the alternate scenario where, you know, we don't have a hardline rule in place, in which case, where do we think we have the right to fine players $5,000 if there was no actual rule? Like I said, there's always been an expectation that you can't go out and, you know, have beers during the week when you're meant to be training and recovering and preparing for a week. But the players should be entitled to that one night a week where they can let their hair down. Banning players going out and having a good time seems like too far to me. And to be honest, it's a bit of a double standard when you consider the players are still going out to Hungry Jack's meet and greets where you think there's just as much chance for COVID infection. So just to be clear on my position on this, I simultaneously think those boys involved probably did make a poor decision. And if it were me, I probably wouldn't be going out during peak pandemic conditions with the club in the state that it is. Equally though, I don't know if I'm comfortable with football clubs having the power to find players for going out in their spare time and drinking. For me, it's not unreasonable to have a conversation, like I said, and ask them to be conscious of you know the risk of infection. But for me, sanctioning them is going a little bit too far. And the AFL Players Association agreed with that. Don't get me wrong, I do understand the emotional response from West Coast and why there'd be a severe amount of frustration they have the right to feel let down but are they a little bit out of their depth with actually going and punishing these players in my opinion probably a little bit so now let's look at the media response and for me the media turmoil from this has been way over the top and that's kind of just the nature of wa media be it west coast or Fremantle, when one of them is struggling and the other one is doing really well the media really exacerbates that and targets clubs that are on the way down and blows smoke up the team that's on the way up so when the news broke i think the eagles were faced with a choice if they underreact to this story then their leadership is going to potentially be called into question for not driving high enough standards. I think the Eagles thought if they beat the media to the punch and reacted harshly, then maybe, you know, upper management will be spared criticism from the media about not driving, you know, standards and expectations. Having said that though, that's exactly what they tried to do and it only fueled the fire for criticisms and calls for upper management to get sacked. Sure enough, Kane Corns felt the need to weigh in on this issue as he so often does and he actually made the statement that he didn't think Adam Simpson would survive this. I mean, really? Someone else came out with an article and then said that, you know, Trevor Nisbet should be sacked or resigned from his post as CEO. And of course, whenever this happens and the Eagles are under fire, the attention goes straight to Nisbet and inevitably just after that, people start saying, well, he should have been sacked in 2006. Whether or not that's true has absolutely no relevance to this particular issue. Considering the fact that these Eagles players haven't actually violated any sort of community expectations, the media response has been overwhelming. And to be honest, I don't know if I heard about when those two rich players broke out of quarantine conditions in Queensland and went to a strip club. I don't think I heard about that as much as what I'm hearing here now, but then again, that's probably due to the fact that I live in Perth. So maybe you guys in the comments can shed some light on that. So then Matthew Pavlich has come out and simultaneously made, you know, a very valid point that sort of echoes what I've been saying in this video, and then simultaneously followed it with possibly the dumbest take that's ever come out of his mouth. So I watched the video on 7 News, but I'll read for you now an article that is quoting what Pavlich says, which says, 
Pavlich believes the penalties handed down by the club are too harsh. I think this is an overreaction, Pavlich said. Yes, the Eagles have a long injury list at the moment, and given COVID is so rampant throughout WA, going to a nightclub wasn't the smartest move from these players. I agree with everything you've said so far, Pav. But the Eagles have hung these players out to dry so the hierarchy can save face. Not the worst point. It was an eight-day break between games, and players should be allowed to unwind from the pressures of high-performance sport. Good point, Pav. However, you should have stopped while you're ahead. Now, understandably, Pavish is a Fremantle legend and uh, understandably probably doesn't have the best opinion of the West Coast Eagles. And he just couldn't keep this in, this little, you know, passing drive-by. He couldn't help it. He goes on to say, this is hypocritical from West Coast. Imagine if they took attending night spots so seriously back in the mid-2000s. Perhaps when they were winning, it was easy to turn a blind eye to their off-field behavior. What Pavlich apparently fails to realize, or is at least pretending like he's failing to realize, is that the issue wasn't that the players went out clubbing, it was the fact that we're in the middle of a pandemic which did not exist in the mid-2000s. Well done Pavlich, you've done a great job of working the 2006 drug saga back into the conversation when it had absolutely no relevance. And the roasting doesn't stop there. South Fremantle coach Todd Curley came out and criticized the Eagles for having to use one of their best players, Jake Florenka, as a top-up player who is undoubtedly a very important player to South Fremantle. And I do, I am empathetic of these waffle coaches and, and VFL coaches or whatever who have to give up their players every now and then to top up the AFL clubs who literally can't field a team. But there was something very acidic about the way he expressed this view. He basically suggested that it was unfair that the Eagles had to draw on players from the waffle to make up for their own bad decisions and letting players go out to nightclubs. I mean, this would be a great call, I'm sure, if you just looked at it at the surface level and didn't want to apply any logic to the situation at all. To make it absolutely clear, the Eagles had, I think, 13 injuries on their injury list this week and eight COVID isolations on top of that. For the record, one player from the nightclub got COVID and missed out from this game. So given that we used three top-up players, your boy Jake Florenka would have been playing in that game regardless of this nightclub incident. Also, Todd, mate, I'm sorry to say this, but you're probably going to have to get used to Florenka playing in Eagles colours again with a mid-season draft right around the corner. So enjoy that one, mate. Okay, I'm just being a smart ass at this point, but whether or not it be you know directed at my club, which of course I'm going to be a little bit defensive about, one thing that always irks me is just when the media builds up momentum and people feel like they've got a hot take that can really add to this comment and in this case, it was just there was just no logic. I'm sorry. But anyway, guys, that is pretty much my view on the situation uh, that that has unfolded with this nightclub saga. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think the Eagles have overstepped a little bit here by hanging these players out to dry and publicly, you know, finding them and shaming them? For me personally, I think the players are a little bit hard done by, but equally feel that they have made an error of judgment. And for me, as a fan, you know, reacting to the story, I'm probably less bothered by the COVID infection risk than I am by the fact that the Eagles went out and partied with the opposition team after getting annihilated by 109 points. The suggestions, you know, the Eagles have a poor culture and that there's a civil war, you know, unfolding beneath the surface at West Coast. To be honest, I don't have any commentary for you on that because everything that's been reported so far has just been innuendo. And I'm not saying that it's not true, but there's nothing meaningful out there other than Caroline Wilson sort of making a few empty claims. Maybe she has some info. She probably doesn't based on the exact phrasing. So don't get me wrong, we're not in a good spot, but I like to keep things sort of clear and try not to let emotion get in the way of analyzing where a football club's at. Anyway, guys, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. What do you think of my opinion? Roast me for it. That's, that's all good. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.